This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to your name. Father God, once again, we come before your presence, God, giving you all praise, honor, and glory, thanking you for another day that we have not seen. Asking, Father God, that you would have your way in us and through us. Holy Spirit, we say that you are welcome in this place. Have your way, God. Father, we pray and ask in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would dispatch the ministering angels. Oh, God, dispatch the warring angels today. Father, that they may hoover over this sanctuary. Talking about us, oh, God. Ask them, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, that as your people enter into your courts, God, that they would come in with a spirit of expectation. God, we give you praise. We give you honor. Thanking you, Father, for the mighty works that you're going to do on this day. For, Father God, we come with a spirit of expectation. Father, we're looking for those that need to be healed to be healed. Those that need to be delivered to be set free. God, we pray and ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, that you would send down the former and then send down the latter rain, oh God. Father, let it fall afresh upon us today. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us, oh God. God, give us a fresh anointing, God, that we would hear you and take heed to what the Spirit is saying into the church. Now, Father, we ask that your anointing would flow from the pulpit to the congregation. Anoint a fresh your pastor, God, as she goes into the facts of glory, God, to receive, to receive the word that you want to deposit in our spirit today. God, we give you praise. We give you all honor. And Satan, we haven't forgotten about you. You shall not. You cannot. And you will not hinder any move today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We loosed you from your assignment against this word on today. Holy Spirit, have full course. We'll forever give your name all praise, all honor, and all the glory. All of God people said. Now come on and give the Lord a hand, pray. Somebody say glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can we all remain standing as we receive our apostle and our pastor? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. morning to tell God, here's my worship. Take joy in it. Amen. Make it a dwelling place. Amen. I want to make you smile this morning, God. Hallelujah.
lifted up and said, oh. One more time, sing more. Oh, 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 oh,
Jordan stream Said the Jordan River It's chilly and cold for me It'll chill your body But not my soul If you don't believe We've been redeemed Follow me there To the Jordan stream Said the Jordan River It's chilly and cold It'll chill my body But not my soul If you don't believe We've been redeemed Follow me down To the Jordan stream To the Jordan River It's chilly and cold It'll chill your body But not your soul If you don't believe We've been redeemed Follow me down To the Jordan stream
attack my throat for three days but like pastor say it take three days for me to get back up again <laughs> because what the woman of God say enough is enough I've had too many fights I've had too many struggles to go through and not prosper I'm telling you this this is my response so when the enemy comes in like a flood
Wesley was here in spirit. When the woman of God said, we are dirt, good dirt. We are good dirt that God sees fit to produce through. We produce through good soil. So every word that we receive from this here pulpit, that's more soil being added. More producing being added. What did the word say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything, everything will be added unto you. It didn't just mean a little. It didn't mean just next week. But God said everything, everything will be added unto you. Listen, I came to destroy the foul ground today. I came to walk upon new soil today. I came to tread upon new soil today. We break in every religious spirit in this house. Woo. Every spirit of tradition, we break the ground. I came to make the enemy mad today. I came to make the enemy mad today. Naso, nisara makusheta ma. Listen, that's all right. Just you don't mind if I just speak. You don't mind if I just speak. Who say command your soul? Ishki da mando ro ro boko se. Nye na 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 makusata nda. Naso donda ma. Nishka da masi. Yo donda suku. Nasata na makuse. wanted to be a flow, okay? This is what the song that came in my head. Jared, if you want to, you can just follow along. Sooner or later, you'll turn in my favor. Sooner or later, you'll turn in my favor. Sooner or later, you'll turn in my favor. You gotta say that till something breaks.
The testimony is today that God did it again. God did it again. Even through the midst of turmoil, God did it again. Even through the midst of chaos and confusion, God did it again. Y'all stand to your feet. 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 High your vocal say. Stand to your feet. High your vocal say. God is doing it even now. He's doing it now. Thank you. As I introduce to some and present to others, none other than our very own, the pastor of this here house, the prophetess of this house, Pastor Tanya E. Randall. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. All ye saints, shout for your love with the voice of triumph. Because the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. He said he's turning it around. That's what I heard him say. He's turning it around. It's working in your favor. It's working for you. It's working for you. It's working for you. In an atmosphere of believers, you've got to know it's working for you. It's working in your favor now. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Somebody, you might not believe it, but I dare you to say it from your mouth. Because out of your belly flows the issues of life. And if you believe it, say it. Say it from your mouth. Sooner or later, it's working in my favor. I might not see it right now, but it's working. for me see this is not the moment that you wait for everybody to come in agreement with you to determine the factor of your life God said listen if you could put 1,000 to flight two of you together they can put 10,000 but guess what David said when I could not find nobody I swore on myself that you deserve this this is the season of your abundance mentally spiritually physically you are destined to walk into your purpose oh God oh God we're not playing because see the enemy has tricked a lot of people and convince them that in their mind and their thoughts that you are not who you are where you're supposed to be and operate in the way you should but when you understand and recognize that God said I sent an alternate I sent Jesus Christ to go and die for you so that you would have access to everything that God promised under your name because <laughs> my name is backed by a signature guarantee and that signature guarantee his name is Jesus the Christ the son of the living God so every time you think that you're defeated by anything that's under your name 
you got to know your name is backed like a bond in the bank when your money is in the bank they say FDIC is that not the letters it is backed by a federal reserve so that in the event that anything goes down with your money it can be resupplied to you because it's backed by something else well I'm here to tell you on today that your name is backed by a greater reserve that cannot never tap out that always has your name in mind you are backed with a purpose oh God Y'all, let's pray because I'm too excited today. I'm excited every day. I heard that they said that this is the beginning of Holy Week. I said my week was holy last week, last year. It was holy last week. It's going to be holy this week. And it's going to be holy for the weeks to come. Don't back me in no corner and say that I'm just supposed to recognize holy week for just this week because of the the order of the things that have gone down and transpired i got a living god on the inside of me that tells me that in him we live and move and have our being so that means that i'm an active warrior y'all let's pray because i'm excited oh god father we thank you today because this is a new day that you have ordained for us. You've equipped it with everything that we need. You've supplied us with everything that we need. And most of all, you have given us your word that will be a light and a lifeline to our path on this day. Father, we thank you right now for proving every doubt or wrong. We thank you right now for canceling any and every assignment that has been set out against your people. We are a people that shall rise in victory, that shall rise with a language that shall dumbfound and confuse the enemy. We thank you today, oh God, for all of the blessings that you have supplied in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Oh God, you may take your seat. You know that's my song, Jared. I don't even know why you're starting. Woo! If the earth was made to worship, so will I. If creation was designed to worship, do you not know that I'm greater than creation? God said, I took time to make you, to mold you, to fashion you so that you would be my own. Oh, God. So will I, so will I, so will I. There is nothing in this season that's going to out-worship or thank me that I will not do it before it tries to do it before me. When you recognize where you've been, where you've come from, what the things that have gone in your life that might have been good or might not have been good, you'll learn to give thanks in all things. Because you know that God takes the ugly, the good, the bad, and everything. And he works it together for your good. Because that's the God that we serve. And there's nobody like him. Sis, before I even get started, because we, we're talking about this kingdom language series. And I have a special presentation for you guys. But sis, come here. With, yep, with the great, yes, you. God said, I just want to do something for you before anything even gets started today. Your heart, <laughs> it's full today. I, I just see such like, I see boulders on your heart, like it's just pulling. And when you came in and as soon as you sat down, my heart felt like I couldn't even breathe. Because that's the level of how your heart is so overwhelmed right now. But I'm here to tell you that the breaker has come today on your behalf. And see, when God breaks things, he breaks things so that there's no man that can try to put it back together again. Because see, there's some seasons that it keep repeating in your life and the enemy over and over again. It seems like these same things keep surfacing and every time you make an attempt to open up your mouth for a breakaway, it seems like they just start to formulate right back together again. It's like a magnet is put around a bunch of uh, metal things so that when that magnet comes in, everything just draw right back. 
But God said today, I'm going to be the one to be the restrainer so that nothing again will come and try to easily attach itself to you. Because there's even some people that God said, I got to shut the door. That's it. That's the final chapter. That was the last straw. That's it. But God is saying today that I need to rescue you because your mind is so consumed and it seems like there's no direction. But God said, I am your guide today. I am your director. And most of all, I'm your confidant. God said, talk to me. Talk to me. Because see, sometimes we don't realize it as our own therapy is to be able to open up our mouths and talk. Our greatest defeat is when we keep our mouths shut. And when it's silent, the enemy is on you because you're negotiating thoughts now. You're exchanging decisions. There is no exchange because God said, I've already done it for you. Talk to him. Talk to him. And whom the Son of God has set free is free indeed. So I want to touch and agree with you on today that you are free because you know the word. He said, I know you know the way that you take. <laughs> Sense of pain. So today is your day to elevate. It's your day to shine. Because God said, I'll lift you up and I'll remove you from out of the places that are stricken. It's like a, a striking that just keeps you in that stricken place. Beat. Listen, he loves you more. And everything that is attached to you, the, the ugly things as well, God said, I'm cleansing you of them this day. And you got to know that he's capable of doing it. Amen. Just lift your hands. Glory to God. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you heard her heart the moment she walked in this door on today, oh Father. You know her because she's your daughter, oh God. Father, and right now in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we dry up every addiction, every attachment. We bind up right now every curse that's been attached and assigned to her life. We bind it right now from the very root and we thank you today, oh God, that the course and the direction, the path for her life is being reignited. Thank you, Father, right now. Remove, remove, remove everything, everything 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 oh everything 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 I double come shot you can't oh hold it you God. can't carry it I know I and you can't carry it God. you can't you can't oh, so I'm so tired God. I'm so tired God, I love them. I love them. I know how much I love them. Why did they hurt me so much? God. Why? 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 I need peace, Lord. Do it for her now, Father. I need peace, God. Do it for her now, Father. I so much. Do Why do they now. treat do me so now. bad? Do I love them so much. Why do they treat me so bad? I give them everything, God. I give them everything, God. Why do they treat me so bad? Listen to me. What's your name? What's your name? Rosalie, 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 let me talk to you for a quick moment. Listen to me. Listen to me. I gave them my house. I gave them my home. I give them my money. I give them everything. But guess what? Guess what? Rosalie. I give them my life. That's why your heart felt like life. listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. Listen. What <laughs> my children? My kids, my birds, I love them so much. So why do they treat me so bad? Do you love them enough to let why them go, Rosalie? So Rosalie, oh do you love them enough to let oh them go? Because here's what oh I'm going to tell you you oh can't God. carry weight. <laughs> Listen to me. They turn my kids, my grandkids against me. Rosalie, <laughs> Rosalie. 
I love him so much. Listen. Like Guess so what? Hard. And let me share this it's with so you. Hard. Listen. It's so hard. As long as, and let me say this because it may help somebody else while it's helping you. The more you believe that they belong to you, you're going to keep trying to fix it yourself. Listen, listen to me, listen to me, listen. You keep trying. You keep trying. But let me share something with you. You are not the author nor the finisher of their faith. God lent them to you, every single one of them. They're not yours. And every time you try to fix it, you're going to make a mess of it. You're going to keep feeling what you're feeling. God assigned them to you, but they are not your responsibility. Listen, God knows what your children need. And this is, when I speak this, I'm speaking it because I know from experience. Every time I try to step in to do for my kids what I know God needed to do, it delayed the process. You want to know why? Because I thought I knew what was best for them. So when you're opening up your mouth and you're crying that I gave them a house, I gave them this, I paid that, I did this. You did it because of the love that you have as a mother. But the truth of the matter is, God gave them to you. If you raise them, then trust God's process. Let them go and let God handle them. The best thing that you can do for them is to pray. Our assignment is to pray. My mother-in-law is here today. My husband, who was in his time and day a menace to probably her life and their family. She couldn't do anything to stop him. The process of life had to take place, but yet I know she prayed for him. You've got to let it go because what I felt on that pulpit today, my heart felt like it was going to explode. And that was only for God to allow me to feel what you're feeling. But you're feeling you can't survive taking on the life of everything that you think you've got to run. God said, then how will you be significant for my sake? See, God said, if I get you in place, they'll get in place. I know he sent you here. I know he did. And there's a word for you. And praying this morning, and he told me to come here this morning. Jesus, he sent me to you this morning. Jesus, and I know he did because I was on my living room floor crying Jesus. and praying to him and praying to him on the floor. Jesus, on my floor, he said, Go, go. I didn't even remember how to get here. Jesus, but I put my GPS on and I followed you, and he heard you. He told me to come. He heard you. He told me to come. <laughs> told me to come see y'all think this is a joke but I'm going to tell you something people are in need of real deliverance you need healing for your heart this day and I believe the word that is going to be spoken today and I believe right now that father in the name of Jesus everybody point their hands this way toward Rosalie father Rosa heard your voice today and I thank you because we know that enough is enough. Father, we bind up everything right now in the mighty name of Jesus that is an offense around her. Clean out and clear out the house, oh Father. From every tactic, oh God, that is trying to ease its way to her heart. We thank you right now for a clean heart. Purify her mind, oh God. Renew in her, Lord God, the strength that is needed. That she would be bold, oh God, to continue to speak your word and to come before you. Every element that is an obstacle in her life, oh God, we thank you for canceling the assignment now. 
remove, Father, anything that is an offense. And we thank you right now, Father, for all of these things being done. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. You gonna be all right. You gonna be all right. bless you. Y'all write Rosalie name down because you're going to be praying for Rosalie. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, y'all, I'm so excited. Listen, I, I, I want y'all before I go, because I told, look at my God. You know, y'all just blessing me so much. I'm telling you, I'm so excited. Y'all, if, if y'all really only understood and knew that I really have not slept probably in the last month, but I'm excited at what God is doing. I'm excited at what he's doing in us as a body. I asked two of my sons to put together something for me for next Sunday because I wanted them to be able to just express through their way of what God has been doing. And I know I had shared the testimony briefly of Brian and having the hernia that he had since he was probably, what, 13, 14, somewhere around there. And the other week we went to the doctors and they said, we're going to schedule him for surgery. Well, blessed be to God. Yesterday they gave him the surgery date. He goes in next Wednesday for the surgical procedure. An issue. I thought about the woman with the issue of blood. The issue for all those years. And he has turned around and getting that thing. He said, listen, I'm getting ready to get my gym membership and all these other things back in place now to do the things that I was limited that I was not able to do. And I'm so grateful for it. So he thought he was going to come next week, Sunday, to church to do this. And I said, boy, you're supposed to be in the bed for what they get ready to do to you in this major surgery. So I asked him and Malik to come together and put something together for me. So I want them to come at this time if I get two microphones, because God did it. Amen. See, I, I need you to understand that God did it. We're not waiting for God to do it. God did it already. And this is why I'm talking about this kingdom language series, because out of our mouth, we are speaking life. We're declaring things in the atmosphere in a real present earthly Rim, because our heavenly vision gives us the ability to speak in this earth and execute things that people don't think that is about to happen and go down. But I thank God for these two right here. I thank God for their life. I thank God what God is doing in their lives. I thank God that God is doing something. When I see these young adults in here, I got so excited to see Jazz and Stevie on today. Look at them. How long y'all been married? Five years. Y'all, these are Wayfaring babies, married five years, and they in the house. Marquise. I ain't seen him in I don't know how long. And look at that same smile when he was little. Look at my baby. Oh, my goodness, y'all. I'm, I'm so excited. I don't know what to do with myself. Calm down, Tanya. But, y'all, I, I tell you, I'm, I'm excited at the word that's coming forth on today. Um, Vonnie, you got them queued up. I, I was going to be the hype person, but I, I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to save it for the message. Yes. I can sing until... <clears throat> God did it. <laughs> That's the remix part with me singing it. <laughs> Aaron said he gonna put his hands up. I know God got a plan for me. Got a plan for all of us. God got a plan for me. I understand. Lift up these mortal hands. Praise. Poverty, steady smiling. I don't need a light. 
bill. People trying to sleep on me, make it happen, I will. Steady chasing my dreams. Steady never sleeps, I'm steady getting over. Even though I see me steady eat, I fell into a mist of a darkness. Dream state, coming from the bottom to the top. I see fate. Those who came before me and those who came after me that try hard to prosper, they still make fatalities. Bow to a man for the riches, I never could. Go back to a place full of vengeance, I never would. The crack epidemic from consumption of my old girl, lost in this mess. I was trapped in this cold world, stepping through the doors of my house. Broken home, feel like I can stare through the walls of the broken stone. So fed up with the way that I've been living, but hey. I know I got the struggle. Man was born into Look, affliction. He got a plan for me. For all my friends and all my family I hope y'all good mentally, physically, and financially Praying for the weak, you know we strong If you stand with me, no weapon form So I know that I'm good He got his hand on me, I'm ten toes I don't tiptoe Doing good, but could be doing better Round trip though Everything's a lesson Every L I took, I fixed those Don't care about a friend Cause nowadays it's hard to pick those Grinding to that number on my check Look like a zip code Been through hell and back One hell attack, I'm in defense mode It's all about survival That's why I keep a bible I had a couple homies like Jesus had his disciple But out of twelve it's gonna be a Judas that don't like you Smile in your face but then act so spiteful And I get mad cause they think they got the right to Boy if I wasn't covered in favor I'd probably fight you But I'ma say that for the devil and his demons Cause they plotting and they scheming on my soul But they can't keep it Wait, wait, shouldn't have had it in the first place But I was in a hurt state No, literally my worst state Now I'm good cause I know the kingdom is my birthplace A praise break and make hell shake like an earthquake I hope you got that kingdom language in your word bank Cause it's about to be a revolution like, like Kurt Frank <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry, listen, listen, we are not playing, we're going after everybody, we're going after everything. Listen, I told them, just like I told Daniqua, and just like I told a couple of the other young adults, I said, when you flip the script, because let me tell you something. Do you realize that the enemy is the copycat of us? He took everything and flipped it to distort it to bring forth more damnation to the earth so that that way we don't have a chance at eternal life. But it's something about when you flip the script on the devil. That's why our language has to be so specific and kingdom minded. Because when you start to speak kingdom, you, because when you start to speak kingdom, your position or posture. See, when you are in a place, God said your posture is the bearing conscious of your mental inward decision to produce outward. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. What are you saying? I'm going to say it again, Apostle Eugene Brunson. He said, your posture is bearing a conscious. See, when you are in a posture, it takes a conscious effort to stay in that posture. Because there are so many things on a daily basis that gets you, come on sis, to sway. There's things that hit you that want you to move. You know when, and listen, I don't like bugs. But if I'm standing still and a bug comes, your first reaction is to move. So you got to make a conscious effort to know that that bug can't even bother me. So if I make the decision... Like those soldiers in England, I don't care how many bugs come their direction, they are still in posture. Because they know that there's nothing more that will cause them to move from their assignment that's been given to them to stay in the right posture. So when I look at this and he said it's bearing a conscious mental inward 
Before anything can be manifested outwardly, it is mentally where your battle starts. Your mind will convince you and tell you that everything, instead of me leaving out of your presence and like, Dog, well, I wonder what they didn't like about the color. Does it go with my mind, my eyes? Does it go with? Step on it. Shake it off. Because you're too valuable and your language is too authoritative for you to get stuck on answering minute things. Some things, prophet, don't even deserve a response back. You'd give them your back, but they don't respond. The level of attention that we're giving to stuff, it will identify you as a world worshiper. Because only the world takes on characteristics that the world does. See, kingdom... It gives you the ability to recognize that I don't fight the fight that I'm fighting in the natural. Because his word said, we don't fight against what? And blood. We're up in a higher rank. We're breaking down principalities and powers. Rulers. Stuff that we bring down with a language that's consistent. Y'all hold on because we ain't even get nowhere yet. We ain't even opened up the book yet. Ooh. He said your posture bearing a conscious mental inward decision to produce an outward behavior and attitude. So you mean to tell me my behavior and my attitude is based on my posture? Because if I get slothful, it's going to represent in my attitude and my behavior. When I say I'm sick and tired of something, my attitude and my behavior, it reflects that I'm sick and tired of something. So this is why, again, you got to be mindful of the words that you are speaking because the enemy will know, oh, you sick and tired? That's what you are? Well, then let me add some more stuff to come your direction to really make you sick and tired to get you from off your posture. Because see, as soon as I send enough stuff to make you sick and tired and aggravated and frustrated and defeated and beat down, then now I know that I got you out of the posture from speaking the words that you're supposed to be speaking. Listen, we didn't make this up. He said in... Go to 2 Corinthians, because we're going back to our foundational scripture, but let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, because I don't want y'all to think I'm just saying stuff, because y'all know I don't know nothing. I know absolutely nothing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You better, listen, I, I made that story, listen. Y'all know I was struggling to get that story last week. I was like, was it a, a goat? Was it a billy goat? I said, was he in a ditch or a well? So we, we just made it up. It worked out though, didn't it work out? That, that Billy Goat is in the well and he's kicking dirt and he's standing on it. He's going to rise. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, out of the King James Version, it says this For which cause we faint not. Y'all stop fainting at everything. I'm not talking about physical faint, I'm talking about mentally fainting. Like, it's so overwhelming, because you know what I learned? That if you are here today in this room, that means you had a couple of fainting episodes before and you're still here. So why are you tripping when you're fainting? Get up. You know what they do when a person is physically fainting? They go get a cold rag, run it under some water. They put it all on you, start patting you down. You know, they give you a little smelling salt. They do all of those things. Well, just imagine that in the spirit that God already gave you a cool rag. 
He already put the word up under your nostrils and he told you, get up because it's not that serious. I brought you out of something before. I'm capable of doing it again. So at your worst point in your life, when you really thought that nothing was going to come out of it, and yet here you sit today, that lets me know that God had you in mind then and he got you in mind today. So he said, listen, if I did it before, I'm certainly capable of doing it again because I'm the God of yesterday. The God of right now, today, and your God forevermore. Listen, our language, our posture. He said, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish. I said, wait a minute. I said, God, I am getting older. You know, the things that I used to do, you know, I don't quite do them all the same no more. I can still do them, but I don't do them in that manner. But we put so much observation on the things outside. God said, I love it when you get yourself together, but I love it more when you're not so focused on your outward. Because it is going to perish. But he said, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. He said your posture, it's the conscious of your mental inward that is being renewed day by day. How do I renew what's internal day by day? I got to change the different conversations that I'm having because my language gives me strength day by day. If I'm talking a bunch of nonsense and garbage, guess what? My inside is dwindling, but I'm making the outside look good because your outside conversation is entertainment for somebody else. So if I'm trying to please somebody through what I think I can say to make me look good, he said it's really perishing because it's not attractive at this point. Because until you produce, how do you start to produce? I produce inwardly. It's the stuff that I think about myself inwardly. It's the stuff that I am putting in me daily that's building me up consciously so that when I open up my mouth, it's like E.F. Hutton. They're like, who said that? Who spoke that? Your family will look at you like you're crazy. Well, how did you know that? What, what are you saying? See, people will find good conversation. You will find people when people start leaving and they're like, oh, Apostle's favorite line. Oh, yeah. When they using that as the filler, they ain't paying you no mind because you ain't saying nothing. And I'm not saying if Apostle said that because he said it to me too. That's just him. But listen, you'll know when you are around people and you just start getting the oh, yeah, or they ain't paying you no mind and they just shunning your conversation off, your inward man got to be checked. Because see, your language ought to be so profound that when you open up your mouth, people are still following you and still sitting there. Well, you know, let me, let me see what else they got to say. Let me see what else they're saying. Thirsty for your words. Because your words are not your own. It's a language. He said in verse 17, for our light affliction." which is but for a moment. I said, God, you got the nerve to call my stuff light? Have you, have you did a, 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 a spot check lately on, on my stuff? And you called it a light affliction? God said, do you understand that the things that you think is so heavy in your life, it's really a light affliction because you haven't used the right language on it yet? He said, because if you think that it's too heavy, guess what? He said, I overcame all these things. He said, and I need you to get a little cheerful because I already settled these matters for you. He said, for a light affliction, which is but for a moment. A moment, God? This was like a three or four year process that I remember go, going through this stuff. How in the world did you call this a moment? But to God, it is nothing. 
God said, I just want to see if I can still find you standing in your position, in your posture, even while you're going through this light affliction. He said, it worketh for us. <laughs> I said, wait a minute. How did you take my mess and make it work for me? How did you take the garbage that was going on in my life? How did you take the years that I thought that I wasn't going to make it or be anything or do anything? How did you take when they scandalized me on my job, when my family just abused and, 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 and did all these things? See, you got to think about the stuff that you've gone through in your life. And when you think about it, think about it and know that God turned around and said, he said, it worked for you. What? My stuff worked for me. Because you wouldn't be who you are right now. Oh my God, my God, my God. You wouldn't be right now standing. And guess what? You ain't got to be in full stance. You just got to be in the posture. The posture says that I'm dangerous. Now my position, when we talk about that, that's going to be a whole different ball game. We getting there. But just to know that I'm in a posture that you wanted to afflict me to kill me. But somehow I'm still standing. Somehow I'm still holding on. Somehow I did not give up when I felt like giving up. Somehow I still kept coming to the house when I didn't understand why am I here and what are these words that are coming out of the mouth of the man and the woman of God? I don't even know how that pertains to my situation. He said, just stay in position. Get in that posture. Whew. He said, it worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You don't believe it? Go with me to Romans real quick. And we working our way to our theme. Romans chapter 8. Y'all this, y'all know this is my favorite. My favorite, 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 favorite scripture. This is the scripture that I think God said, girl, I love you. And I called you for this perfect reason right here. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. But before I go to 18... I'm going to scoot on up to 14. But just so you know, because I need to make it plain, that 18 belongs to me. And you too, you can take that same claim and make it belong to you. He said in verse 14, for as many as are led by what? The Spirit of God. See, your language leads you with a different leader. I'm not following the leader of the world because the world is leading me to hell. What am I going to follow the world for? Because I want to do what they do. They want to do what we do. But they just alter it. But he said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Do you realize a son you got rights. I was thinking about this thing when I read this last night. You see that smile right now on his face just when I looked at him? I ain't even say nothing yet. But if I come to my daddy, daddy, I need this, 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 and this. He said, mm. I might put it there in his ear. When I leave from his presence, my daddy going to try to figure out what he need to do to help his daughter. But why would I shortchange myself with a natural man when I got a daddy? I can get in my daddy's face with my language. Hold on. Because I'm getting ahead of myself, y'all, and I'm cheesing. Wait a second. He said in verse 15, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again. See, you've been purchased 
the moment you came into existence and was born, he said, I turned around and knew that you were born into sin. You were shaped in iniquity, but I sent my son to be the ultimate designated survivor for you. So that he can live in you and that you can call on me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold. He said, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. See, when you were outside in the world, there was always a level of fear that you had to really come and address the father because of the bondage that you felt. Because see, with sin, it comes bondage. And when bondage is present, it makes you fearful to come before God. But see, this is why God said, I had to make an exchange. I had to send an alternate in on your behalf to be able to stand for you so that when you understand that you can take him in with the characteristics, now he turns around and says at the latter of verse 15, but you have received the spirit of adoption. What? You mean to tell me that I was granted adoption papers? And I didn't even know that I was an orphan? You just signed me over to a kingship that told me that I was not just an heir. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, Tanya. Pause. He said but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby you cry, Abba, Father. See, I don't need to call on nobody else right now. As much as I know that man would do anything in the world for me. Yeah, I know it. I was waiting for the response. I know he will. But it's not even him because God has to empower him to be a blessing to me. See, God said, the heart of every man is in my hand. So it doesn't matter what you need. God said, I got what you need because I am the master manipulator to massage the heart of whoever you need to be in your life at that present moment to get you what you need to get. This is why I tell people, stop being worried about the system of your life because God knows everything that we need from the beginning, even before we ask, he knows. He said, I just need to hear a consistent language so that I can prepare for you what I got for you. I said, at one point in my life, I said, God, I just think that this is just going to be it. He said, well, if you think that, then that's going to be it. Go ahead and keep on putting it out there that this is it. And that will be it. I had to find the language. And I had to speak the language because the language lines up with his ears. He said in verse 16, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. So you mean to tell, what? Miss him, I'm about to do a cartwheel. I told him, I feel like it. I, last week I had the, the pose. They took a picture of me doing the pose. So I saw it. I was halfway there, y'all. This week, I'm going to get the rock. This is the rock this week. Okay. All right. All right. I just want y'all to know I'm, I'm getting there. The stand and the rock. Okay. All right. Confidence come next. <laughs> That's way down the line. So he said, the spirit itself bear the witness with our spirit. See, I don't even need you mentally to bear witness because your mind will change up on you. Today you feel one way about yourself. Tomorrow you feel this way about yourself. That's why he said, I don't need to line up with your mind. I don't need to mind up with your emotions. I don't need none of that. Because those things there keep you from me. He said, I need spirit to spirit. And the only way I can ignite with you, Keisha, one to twin powers. You see what I'm saying? 
Y'all remember that back in the day, the cartoon through Hannah Barbera, one the twin powers, when they activated, they came together and they spoke form of water. Form of a cup. Now I get in the cup because I'm the water and we do what we do. But we got to align together. This is why God said, it is only by my spirit can you identify with me. You can't try to think this up and think that you got it. The greatest of scholars, he said, I allow the foolish things to confound the wise. The wise will think, oh no, it takes a certain formula in order to make this happen. That's why they still seeking formulas because they have no clue the mind of God. But he said, spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. When you bear something and you have witness with it, you can declare what it is. Apple and an apple, it's an apple. But look at what 17 says. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so, that we suffer with him. How many people are suffering without him? You see what I'm saying, Trace? We don't realize that we go through so much more when we are without him. We wear our stuff when we are without him. We age faster when we are without him. I look at some of my classmates that I graduated with and I'm like, did we graduate from the same class? I'm like, you look like you like 90. What role did, did you take? Because I thought we got on that same stage and got our same diploma together. But outside of God, you will age because worry will kill you. It has a way of making everything fall apart. Y'all know what Apostle used to talk about? He said people used to lose teeth, hair. I'm like, how do you lose all this stuff? But he said, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also, that we may be also glorified together. <laughs> but then he kicked it in with this verse 18 y'all know I feel like I'm in the box where Michael get that boxing in there he said for I reckon I, wait a minute I said what did you say he said reckon is a consideration see I considered you because I knew your language was attached with me. Have you considered my servant Job? Somebody that will shoot evil? Somebody that will stand even if his wife tell him that he's crazy? Even if your family told you it don't take all that coming to church on a Sunday? Forget a Bible study. Are you kidding me? You, that's too much in the week. See, you got to realize that God said, I considered you. He said that the sufferings felt like Zorro just now. Plural. Not one suffer, but some sufferings. For I considered that the sufferings of this present time. Oh my God. Brother Al, that means I'm going to go through some stuff. There's no way in the world that I'm going to not think that I'm not going to go through anything. Because I would be sitting up here and be a lie in your face if I told you you're not going to go through anything. But the thing that you've got to recognize, he said that I considered that already. I knew that you was going to go through some stuff. He said, but I determined that the things that you're going through in this present time is not even close to being considered with the things that I have in store for you. I got so much great things for you. I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to throw in the towel yet. I don't want you to give in. Oh, God. Oh, 
you. I said to myself, they could handle it. They might get a little weary, but they could handle it. They might not understand what I'm bringing them through, but they could handle it. They might be talked about what they're going through, but they can handle it. Oh my God, I might have to lose some people, but they can handle it. in the midst of what I'm bringing you through. Because you've got to be a testimony. Go ahead, Tasha. Listen, this is the season right here that you got to tell people, so what? So what? So what I went through that? So what that happened in my life? So what I'm experiencing this right now? He said that the sufferings are not worthy. The things that I got for you, it's not worthy to be compared. of me because people love to hold on identify you with what you've been through and where you've been and what's come up in your life but then shoo, Keisha's now me the new man the one created in Christ the one where the glory represents now all things are passed away and behold all things all things you the way it used to do the moment he see that my 
behavior has changed. He said, now my position. He said, I won't need a title. I won't need a name. I'm just a servant of God. Because my position says, I've been adopted and I've been held to. That means I'm in a bigger hand than the hand of my situation. Because the hand that holds me in position is the hand that determines the victory. Samantha, the songwriter said, no more will I let the enemy fool me. My earthly mind ruled me. But now that I'm through, I'm turning it over. I'm giving it up because I've been adopted. I've been held in position. This is why Habakkuk 2 can say, I will stand. When I wanted to fall, he said, I will stand upon my watch. Not nobody else's prophet. Because see, I got to see what God got for me. It's time now for me to understand what God got for me. And see, when my language change, I automatically should be looking for the inheritance of what God got for me. I will stand upon my watch. And check this out, y'all. He said, and set me. So you mean to tell me I'm not looking for the apostle, the pastor, the pastor? I ain't looking for nobody to set me. I'll set me. I'll check me. Because I know when my language is off. So I'll check me. Go get that thumbs up off my, my desk in the room back there. I, t I told them, I said, Deaconess Rachel didn't even know what she was doing when she got me that little gift. I said, because this is the season right here where when you check yourself, you ought to have a mental in your image. Did I do good today? Y'all got to get the stand winner when you put your thumb up. Did I do good today? See, you don't need for nobody to check you. You know when you write and your language is correct, your posture is accurate. But when you know, God, today was a good day. My checkup. Oh, God, I messed up today. I got to come back before the lab and try it again. Because it was crucial. It was critical today. I ain't, woo, I didn't think I was going to make it. I thought I was going off. I knew I did it, God. Yes, it was me. But I got to check it today. He said, set me upon the tower. Put me in the high place. I'm not going to wait for nobody to check me and see what's going on. I'm going to check myself before I wreck myself. He said, to see, I'll watch and see what he will say to me. When you check yourself, you will be so attentive in your ear to hear what God will say concerning you he said and what I shall answer when I am reproved I looked up that thing he said when I'm scolded lightly because see God don't want to kill us 
We're the only people that hold ourselves hostage to the things that we do when we do something. But God said, you hear or you hear. If you hear, get here. He said, because I, I can lightly scold you when you're in your high place, but it's when you're completely off and I can't find you. We used that illustration last week of the four people here. And if I push one out the way, God said, just when I was about to come and give you your answer, you got off your tower. You moved. You moved. I'm, you see what I'm doing, right? Because all we need to know and understand is that our posture and our position is greater than what we could ever imagine. There are going to be things, people, circumstances, situations that wants to move you out of position and want to change your posture. Don't give them that victory. Don't give it that victory. Don't give that thing that victory. Because as he said it in his word, the sufferings, the things that you go through in this present time, it's nowhere close to worthy of being compared with what I have for you. Don't forfeit what God has for you because you're trying to stay in the posture for the sake of the world and people. People can't give you nothing save it be the hand of God that touched them to do it. Stand to your feet all over this room. My husband been playing this song like probably for all of his life it seemed like but I don't think the song been out that long but every morning and every night going to bed he plays this song you did the impossible and he played so much I didn't like the song at first and I don't know why it wasn't that I didn't like it but it was like oh okay that's a nice song but every day he's playing it day and night blasting it and then I got it I said, God, you have already done the impossible. Because see, when you have kingdom language, you speak the things that are not yet seen. Because if we would have went on in Corinthians to further read that, he said, it's the things that are not seen that's so revelatory. So your language assigns you to see things before they come to pass. I started seeing last Sunday when I made that statement and that declaration that we're going to be out of this building because we don't have enough room. I already said it. And when I said it, I said it with the expectancy and God just began to start opening my eyes. And as he opened my eyes the other day when my husband and I drove coming out of the Hampton Plaza, where's my phone? We're going to sit down in a second because I'm, I'm, I'm just going to pray because we're going to be out of here in a second. But I turned around and while we were facing Skiff Street going out onto Skiff Street to turn to go up towards Dixwell Avenue, dead smack in my face. Where's the other camera? Y'all got my tablet camera? Because I think I took the other one. Yeah, come here, Bryce, so you could put this on the screen. But I said, from just hearing the, revel the re revelation of that song, you did the impossible. I saw this. Yeah. 
You all see that? This is the old L.A. fitness building. So... <laughs> Y'all, listen. When I saw it, I said, God, we're going to be fit all around. Then I saw the big available sign up there. Now it shut down in the midst of the pandemic. So I took the number and we were on our morning prayer call. And I'm laughing while I'm praying because I think it was my turn to pray. And I said, they probably like, what in the world is she laughing at while we on the prayer call praying? But I got tickled because when I saw what I saw, a joy leaped in me. So I couldn't wait for 8 a.m. Because I called the man at 8 a.m. The realtor, known quickly, rewind real quick. Just before I was about to make the call, Mother Claudia gave me a card last Sunday, and I didn't open it until Monday. When I opened the card, before I opened it, that yellow poster over there, Jeremiah 29 and 11, was on the front of the card. I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Plans to prosper you and to give you an expected end. So I saw that on the front of the card. Then mother wrote a couple of words in the card and ended it with Genesis chapter 12 and verse 3. Mother, you was prophesying in that card. And I said, well, what would mother write Genesis 12 and 3? Let me see what that is. It says, and I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Why did I put that up on the wall there this week? Because I said, in order for this manifestation of that building to happen, all the families of the earth that are attached has to be blessed. So I begin to speak blessings over this house, over every planter of seed. But then Apostle Valerie Washington called me and Jerry Friday before the ordination. She said, here's what I hear for y'all. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 through 14. I said, what is that you saying? Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks, possession of herds, and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. Not jealous. Envy. Because we're about to set the stage to do so that the kingdom will continue to do. We don't want nobody jealous. We want them envy to know that the same thing can happen and go down. So now I call the man. The realtor, when he answered, I said, I'm interested in 46 Skiff Street. He said, well, let me start out and tell you that the owner is filthy rich. And this is, what, this is what I said. He said, he's filthy rich. I said, well, okay, Tim. So what is he asking? So he said, well, uh, he only wants to sell it to a hospital or medical center. Because he said, nobody else can afford it. So he said, the square footage 
to rent it, the monthly rent is $51,000.14. I said, well, we don't want to rent it. Because why would we give a rich man more wealth? I said, what is the asking price? So he said, wow. He said, normally by then, you know, people would um, end the conversation. He said, shall I continue? I said, did you hear me say stop? So he said, the building, he's asking for $200 a square foot. He wants $9 million for the building. I said, he wants $9 million. A rich man. $9 million. I said, okay. But see, what he don't know is who we know. Yeah. Apostle, that used to be his gym. That he used to go in every day at 5 o'clock in the morning. I don't believe he just chose LA Fitness to go in and walk around and jog. And do all of those things. I believe his feet... was already assigned to the building I said we will obtain the land 45,000 square feet of building sitting on six acres of land and room to build we done talked about everything that we want to do as a ministry. We have sown in tears as a ministry for 36 years. My sister asked me, she said, are you afraid to talk about it on, on the, the camera? Nope. Draw it in closer. Because I know that there are those out there that are going to sow seed into the vision. This is going to go forth, not for just our sake, but for our children, our children's children, and the children after that, and those to come until Jesus returns. Why? Because we are going to create a habitation for the kingdom to be able to continue to enlarge itself. And we're not afraid. So as I, after I pray, Keisha's mind started just working. I said, Keisha, I don't know what God going to share with you to give you to, to share whatever. But I said, we have a church of believers. We have a board of believers. And we have vision for the services that we are going to bring forth through this place. I don't know if any of y'all got to see that little office that I decorated back there that I made my little office. But I said to myself, I'm not putting another thing in there. I felt like stripping all the walls the other day when I came in here and just posted with scriptures all around it so that our language can line up with where we're heading. Because this place I've already spoken in is going to be a blessing to the next church that need to come in and have this experience for this season but our time and I'm speaking it because the language that God has given me to speak it our time is up and we will not sign another lease in this building we're growing not physically mentally and spiritually because the mind of God there is no limitation Elder Ron oh God let's pray real quick Father yes Father <laughs> Father see and let me tell you something the revelation because he just said something I closed my eyes to get ready to pray as the Father he answered that's how quick it's about to happen. And I heard the voice of God said, and we won't have to beg nobody for anything. We won't have to beg anybody for anything. 
He's going to make it happen. Sometimes people being able to want, don't want to come to church because they say, well, they're just going to ask for money. They're just going to ask for money. God said it's going to happen and you ain't going to have to beg nobody for anything. Anything. Our Moses is going to see the land flowing with milk and honey. Our Moses is going to see the land flowing with milk and honey. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are your kingdom children. And we operate today, oh God, according to the plan of your word. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to cleanse ourselves so that we would be prepared for this end time reign, oh God. That we would be the examples in the earth, oh God, the blueprint for your people that are lost and bound and afflicted, oh God, oppressed and depressed, oh God. Father, those, Lord God, that are without mother and father, oh God. Those, Lord God, that are widowed, oh Father. God, we thank you that we are the answer to the need of those in the world, oh God. And we pray this day, oh Father, that your perfect plan and will is being done and established in each and every one of us. And we give your name the glory for it, the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands as you take your seat for a moment. Oh, glory. Listen, before we get ready, oh God, if there's anybody here that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior, or you might be out there, this opportunity is your moment. See, one thing that I love, God said, I only ask for the sin. Because who I made you, I fearfully and wonderfully created you. As a matter of fact, I set you aside and I set you apart before the foundation of the world and you didn't even realize it. But all he wants is relationship with you. So if that happens to be you in this place, he said, I just want you. I wish I could sing that song, but I can't sing that song, so keep on with that one. But I just want you. That's his, his cry. And Romans 10 and 9 says, listen, confession is made from your mouth. And he said, when you call upon me, I'll come in and sup with you forever. Because eternity is your portion. Hell was never designed or created for us. And I'm not going to take it lightly that somebody out there that might be watching that you made a decision to say, you know what, today that's me. If it's not you here, it might be you out there. And I just want you to repeat after me right now. Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to forgive me of all my sins, to wash me in your blood. I believe that you sent your son to die for me so that I would have life eternally. Thank you for receiving me this day as your servant in an eternal kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Listen, if you hear those hands clapping right now, it's because not only are we rejoicing, but the angels in heaven are rejoicing because your name has been written in the book of life. And that within itself is enough to celebrate. I want you to make sure that you like, subscribe to this channel, so that that way every time we are on and live, you get the chance to eat a fresh meal to feed your spirit man. Because as you heard today, spirit to spirit. God bless you. We thank God for you. And I encourage all of you to like and subscribe on our Wayfair Ministries YouTube channel so that that way you are not only fulfilling the mandate, but you are making it known that I'm attached to something great. Amen.
So before we get ready to go, I'm going to have um, Keisha to come to talk about what God laid on her heart for a quick second. And we want to bless our shepherds. We want to be able to be a blessing to them. Cough drop. Somebody needs prayer. Who needs prayer? Who needs prayer? Me. Come on. Glory to God. Y'all just come right to the front. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. What's those books? Emergency. Care and transportation of the sick and injured. Nursing assistance. You going for your nursing? Let me EMT and for your nursing degree at the same time. CNA and EMT. Y'all better clap and give it up. See this what this is language right here. I will pass my EMT written and practical exam. See, when you don't, listen, all you need is to write the vision. Make it plain. My school expenses will be paid and I will be a paramedic. Out of the abundance, next week I'm, I'm talking about it now. Watch your mouth is next week. The Kingdom Language Series, watch your mouth. This is it. Since you do know we already come in agreement with you. We know what it takes. Dr. D, stand up. We got Dr. D in the house. Dr. D, how old are you? 32. She's a doctor. Stand up. Yeah, thank you, Sister Vivian, for, for poking her. Sis, how old are you? 30 going on 31. What is your title? Registered nurse in the medical ICU. Where's my other? There's a Sonora's not here. Registered nurse. Jazz, where's she at? Jess, what are you? Jazz. LPN, and how old are you? 38. Dee Dee. Didn't I see Dee Dee here? Stand up. Erica, I'm sorry, I gotta use the professional names. Erica, how old are you? 43. 42, what's your title? All of them. Wait a minute. Wait, she, when you say all of them, you got to go bring the mic. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Uh, I am a youth director and community liaison for an agency in Bridgeport. I also am a family support worker where I assist DCF with, I do um, supervised visits, mentoring and parent education. And then I am, I do individual contracting as an educational consultant for daycares in Connecticut. See what I'm saying? Dara. Yeah, she said. Hmm. I'm glad she didn't ask me for my age, but <laughs> I was like, Dee Dee. Dee Dee. Masters in early childhood education. A mental health specialist. Mental health specialist. Do y'all think we got what we need around here for a $9 million building? That's just in the medical profession. Don't let me go through here and just have this microphone passed around and everybody tell me what they do. Pass the mic. Y'all, we're going to have a testimony Sunday because I, I promise y'all, it's all in the house. God told Apostle years ago, everything you need is in the house. Everything. You have a degree in sociology and criminology, and you're going back now for another one to be an EMT as well as a paramedic. Oh. 
Father, and she got her scriptures on the back already. Father, it's already been written. We thank you that you knew this day from the very foundation. And we declare this day, oh God, as she has written the vision and made it plain. She's the first reader, oh God. And we thank you for the full manifestation, oh God, that we will be celebrating an EMT and a paramedic on top of all the other skills she already has. Thank you, Lord God, for the full manifestation now that it is being established and it is done. Those books will be another Bible to her, oh God. She shall digest everything that is being read. She shall comprehend it and she shall execute it with diligence. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Put these back in these books. That is a done deal. I can't wait to walk. And, uh, look, I said, I can't wait to walk across the stage. <laughs> girl, I'm trying to take your glory, girl. You go walk across that thing. God bless you. That is done. Brother Joseph, sharp in the suit. What you talking about? So I'm going to pray for the back pain. Because as for the other thing, you already know. Your diligence becomes your testimony. So as you continue to walk and operate in him, he will show you just what we talked about today. Your posture and position. And y'all took my thumb away that fast, huh? You'll know your thumbs up or your thumbs down. Because see, when we've been in it for a long time, sometimes we become ignorant ourselves to the things that we already know. And God said, you already know the way that you take in him. So he's given us that self-check, thumbs up, thumbs down. And in the midst of it, as you continue your posture in him, I believe God. Now, Father, this is your servant. Everything in the body you have already fearfully and wonderfully made. And this body has been designed and tailor-made, oh God, to give you glory. So we bind up every disc, every attachment to the spine. All the blood vessels, the arteries and the veins, oh Father that are producing, Lord God, even in the oxygen, oh God, that is breathing and going forth through his body. I thank you right now, Lord God, for releasing, Lord God, the strain now, God. Loosen up everything, oh God, that has been tightened, Father. And I thank you right now that even in his twisting and his movement, Father, that you are producing healing, oh God. Thank you now, God. Thank you now for your healing virtue. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister Keisha, come on real quick. Come on. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yep, come on. We got a treat for you. I don't know why I, I, I keep forgetting your name. No, I, you know I know your name, baby. That's my girl. It says, yes. What is it? Debbie. Debbie. All right. Debbie wants to join the church today, y'all. <laughs> Go, Debbie. Go, Debbie. Go, Debbie. Go. Y'all brought the running man out of me. You just hold on right there. Hold on. Amen. I am so excited. I feel like pastor. I am so excited when 
She called me to tell me about this location. I live on Mix Avenue, so I'm, you know, up a little higher. I look at the top of this building every single day. Every single day I see the roof of that building. After I spoke with her, I said, oh my God, I could see it. I saw it, I saw it, I saw it, I saw it. For those who don't know, we went this route, how long ago was it when we tried to do this, when, when we attempted to do this before? It was a few years, almost 18, 20 years ago, we tried to do this and people came in and took advantage of us. They stole money from us, they did things that they wasn't supposed to do, it was all undermined. And as soon as I got excited about what she said, that was the first, the next thought that came to mind. That very next thought, because that's what the enemy will do. Soon as something good happens for you, as soon as you take a breath, that next thought is he'll remind you why you don't need it, you don't deserve it, it won't happen, it can't happen, you out of your mind, you lost it. God gave me this scripture, and I just wanted to share. 1 Samuel 30 and 8. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue. For thou shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Listen, that sealed the deal for me. That sealed the deal for me because I know immediately when the devil came to God, God counteracted that thought immediately with this particular verse. Okay, so what are you saying? I'm saying we got enough folks. See, that's why I like our church population. Because we're not, listen, some of us came from some serious stuff, some backgrounds that's a little bit more out of the regular church route that many of us have attended. Many of us was not scared in the street. Most of us was ready for anything that went down in the street. So there is no way in the world that just because I'm saved that that same type of boldness is gone. No, we still got that. We still have that. We're still not scared. We're still not afraid. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we are going to get this land. Do you hear me? We are going to get this land. No devil in hell. I bind every thought. I bind every demonic activity that tries to come up against this project. You will be bound in the name of Jesus. I am, woo boy, wait a minute. When I looked up the property when she told me about it, it she said, well, he's only selling it to a hospital or a medical facility. I said, well, dog on it. That is what we are. Do you even understand that you just spoke something that you have no idea? When something is wrong with you, you go to the emergency room. That sister was on the floor praying in her house and God told her to do what? Come to the emergency room. This is the hospital. This is the medical facility. Why? Oh, it was a couple of years back on Gulf of the Hill when Jesus paid the price. Oh my God. You can come to the ER for free because you don't need insurance. You got Blessed assurance. 
birthday, celebrate, whatever. It's going to be different for us. On Independence Day this year, 2023, we're going to raise $100,000 between now and the 4th of July. Who's scared? Who's scared? Because if you're scared, if you're scared, say you're scared so we can pray a special prayer for you. But for all of those that believe God, if you believe God, all we need is a hundred thousand dollars. That's a hundred people for a thousand dollars, two hundred people, five hundred dollars. Let me tell you something. Don't think in the natural. This is not a natural movement because your mind will talk you out of it. You got to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not making no promises because God already made a book of them, a whole book of them. So I'm not here to tell you, well, if you do this, God is going to do this. No, we're not doing it. That's, that season is over. We're not doing that. I'm asking you that if you believe God, that 46 Skip Street, somebody put that picture, wait a minute, put that picture back up. Somebody get here. Somebody get here. Because this is the picture. This is the picture I saw. Okay. Now you see what, I want that picture. Soon as we get that up, you see what that says? You see what that says? Make it go. Who name is going there? Oh! For those of us who can walk it, we're going to walk from, 290, from 29 Marge Street to 46 Skiff Street. For those who can't walk it, get in a car and we're going to caravan it down there. But when we do our grand opening, I can, oh my God, Hamden will not be the same. There are 200, approximately 294,000 people in that area. God said, I still got 10,000 more that haven't bowed down to Baal. You think God is worrying about membership? No, because when we step on the scene, just like God told her and directed her here and led her here, we don't have to go to nobody church and pull nobody out. We don't have to go from church to church to try to pull members from another church to bring them to ours. God said, what I have for you is for you. And the people are going to find us. Why? Because you don't need a lot of information to find out where the hospital is. When you're sick, you will find where the hospital is. So I am saying to you today, if you commit to being one of the people, and I believe everybody is going to commit. How about that? I believe everybody is going to commit. Now, if you desire to give more than $1,000, we can do that. Look at that. Listen. Listen. She... Uh-oh. Wait. See, she noticed that I took birthing of off the wall this week. No more birthing. We are the generation of leaders. She said she got her card on the phone. She said, I need to tap and pay. There's Tasha right there. She said, let's get this started right now. Sister Jackie got the envelopes. Get the names because we want to make sure. How much you need by um a hundred thousand. Yes. So a hundred thousand.
to us minus 1,000. Minus 2,000. Minus I'm 2,000. Ready. I'm not good at math, but we going in the right direction. We're going in okay. the right direction. We going in the right direction. We're going in the right direction. $2,000 already. $2,200. And five dollars. Listen, this is going to be a blessing to a lot of people. I said to Pastor when we were talking, I said, Are you sure you want to do that on live? Because in my mind, the first thought, like I said, the first thought what the enemy says, What if somebody steal your idea? Let me tell you something. Pastor said, Yes, we're going to do it because what's going to happen is I need for the body to know that it's not just going to be us that's giving in here. People are going to be compelled to sow even in the social media realm. This is not going to be the only avenue where we're going to get blessed. Money cometh. Money cometh now. Money cometh now. Money drop in the bucket when we're talking about God do you understand he said the cattle upon a thousand hills all belong to me if I was hungry I wouldn't even ask you for nothing because I own everything I dare you I dare you to step out on your faith on your faith and be a blessing to this movement because I'm telling you with or without you it's going down it's going down so just please please the first I'm not the first Sunday in July July 9th which is the second Sunday in July we will have the final total of our hundred thousand dollar pledge from everybody Everybody is going to be able to be a part. I'm not telling you that you're going to get a fancy, fancy trophy if you give. No, that's the world system. We're going to give because we believe in the vision of our leaders. We believe that when we move this one time, we ain't moving no more. That everything that we need is going to be in that house. And here it is. Some of y'all said y'all would never go to the gym. Look at God. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> Listen. Let's be a blessing. We want to bless our apostle and our pastor. And we want to be able to have another bucket for the seeds that were sown today. Minister Keisha is going to come back in detail as the weeks come so that that way we can just pledge to give. We already have the account open and we have been assigned our own personal financial banker at Key Bank. We have been supplied with our business specialist. Let me tell y'all, it's so much that's happening that's going down right now. I'm telling y'all, it's happening. It's happening. We're not just speaking it, we're operating on it, amen? So this one here, our apostle, uh, we're standing for our apostle and our pastor, on uh, uh, Pastor Diane. And this one is for the seed sown. And listen, we're not going to keep track of what you give. We just, we believe that what you give is what you're going to give. Because at that point, God is going to open up what he placed upon your heart. So that is what that will be for on this day. And tithes and offering you can put there also with Minister Ron. Aaron. Oh, they coming back. They coming back. Listen, you, you, listen, cousin, I know you've been waiting for it. I got you covered. This is just for you. <laughs> listen, everybody stand to your feet and come from wherever you are. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
matchless name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for every individual who had the ability to sow. For those who did not and have the desire to give, Lord God, we pray that the floodgates are open on their behalf. The windows, oh God, are pouring forth the manifestation of the blessing and the harvest. The north, the south, the east, and the west winds are blowing their direction, Lord God. Thank you right now for sustaining our shepherds and for sustaining this ministry that there is nothing missing and nothing broken. We thank you, Lord God, that the peace of God reigns over every sea in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you for it amen glory to God he all right gave listen me uh -oh. one more. I said he gave me one more chance he gave me one more he gave me another chance he gave me one more he gave me another chance you better go there he praise him brother one praise him brother Shot. 
Listen. 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 Listen, y'all, this Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m., we got the last seven words. David Edwards, Rachelle Edwards, Alan Tilly, Lexis Telford, John and Andrea Snowden, and Ann Leggett. It's going down this Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m. They got 10 minutes each to talk about the last seven words of Jesus. And I know it's going to be fire up in this house. We have our roller skating party that's going down Friday, April 21st at Roller Magic from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. It's $13.50. And the rental is $5 for the skates. Wherever we go, we bring in the noise. So we, we just come on through. Even if you don't skate, just come and take a seat. Because that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to play myself and get on no roller skates. And our dance academy. I'm changing it now. Psalm Generation Dance Academy. They are having their first bake sale in three weeks. There's pre-orders that can be taken. There's a flyer on the wall going out the door. Write it down so that that way you'll know what your order is and it'll be ready on that. Okay, see Sister Jessica or see Sister Tam. Y'all wave y'all here. Y'all come here. Come real quick. Come run to the front. After y'all ran last week, y'all was running. And y'all next Sunday... Easter Sunday is their debut of their dance ministry here at Wayfair Ministries that will be ministering in dance. They have worked hard every Saturday coming to the camera. So see one of them to get your orders in for the baked goods. The, the thing is there, they can even tell you. Banana pudding jars, Oreo cheesecake, red velvet cheesecake, Plain cheesecake, lemon cake, strawberry cookies, brownies plain, and brownies with walnuts. You can pre-order, and when your, your money is paid, your treat will be ready. See them today. This is all going towards the Psalm Generation Dance Academy. Amen? All right. Thank y'all. Minister Kev got an announcement, and after that, Debbie. Oh, come here, Debbie. Come here, girl. It's your beautiful self. Debbie been coming here on and off for many years. And Debbie, as today, today, Sister Debbie. We welcome Sister Debbie to the Wayfair Ministries family. Y'all could do better than that. I want to hear some claps. I 
love you so much. Welcome to the place that's not perfect, but we serve a perfect God. So we welcome you. I know you're going to go with Minister Lisa to get your information and make it official. But we thank God and we declare that your eyes will be open to see vision of what's needed, that you may see the need for this house. Because I believe that God doesn't just allow members to just join, but I believe that he's given them vision to see where their hands could be of service. So thank you. I love you. <laughs> Lisa, just, yep, follow Lisa, Minister Lisa. Listen, as, as, I was going to say Cheeks, Big Cheeks, as Malik and Brian, it's so funny, because uh, today I was telling, well, first of all, while they come, y'all come on. I thank God for my family being in the house today. I don't call them my mother-in-law because I believe God gave me a whole nother mother. I thank God for my mom, Barbara Jo Randall, being up in the house today. Woo! I always tell her, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be so happy as I am with a smile on my face because she birthed that man over there just for me. I didn't know it in sixth grade because I ain't like him in sixth grade. But listen, let somebody try to pull us apart now. I love you now, baby. Woo-wee! Oh! <laughs> that's my baby cakes I thank God for my little brother being. come here little bro my little brother is in the house y'all my cheekbones are like on fire <laughs> listen my baby brother when he came to live with us on High Top Circle, <laughs> Jerry Randall used to just, he was so hard on him. And I said, babe, leave him alone. That's why this, this my baby brother. I said, because he's getting it. He's watching you. He see the pattern of what you do. I used to watch him get up in the morning after he fixed his coffee. He would go down, we called it slavery ready. Slaver ready. Mm -hmm. He would go down the labor ready on State Street, be out there early in the morning to hope that he get picked for one of the jobs for the day just to be able to do something. When the days happened that there was no work and he came back to the house, we would literally sit at that house and just dialogue all day long. So when Jerry would come home and be on him, like, why are you not doing nothing? Da, 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 da. You, Brian, you know how he could get sometimes. You, cause he, Brian with us right now. But, <laughs> but he said he got it. Today, he is a husband. He's a dad. His job, he's natural gas. Natural gas company. Out there doing this thing. Class A, don't need a class A. His class A trucking license. Just brought a new car where they asked him what did he want for his old car. Who goes to a dealership and they ask you how much you want for your vehicle? To watch where God has brought him from, I could never be more proud. And I tell him he is a point of reference a lot when I talk to the brothers on the street. And I love you. I love you too. He told me the other day when he called me, he said, why would I not be here by your side 
after you stuck by mine. Y'all, I could have broke down. Ah. They're my cousin Will and cousin Deb. They up in the house, married, building. I am so blessed. My beautiful cousins, it's so funny. The other day we were at the gas station, me and Brian going to get breakfast. And I pulled up and Aaron was in the car driving. driving. Look. <laughs> No. <laughs> Listen, I told him, keep speaking it. You better believe it because I still believe God. I said, for the fact that God spared his life when he should not have been alive in that accident, but he is here today. I know that there's still more. But him and this great woman, Lindsay, that stands at his side, I love them so much. Jerry called me when I was standing there at the car and I said, Bay, I'm standing here talking to my favorite cousin. He said, who, Aaron or Lindsay? <laughs> and we laughed. I said, <laughs> he had it right because he was in the same household. <laughs> but I love it because I said, God knows our heart's desires. And Jerry made a profound statement. He said, why would I want my family to die and go to hell when I know that there's eternity that has been set up and designed for me? Why would I not want my family to experience that same thing? Then I got my beautiful brother and sister, my hairstylist, and Jerry's business partner, my brother, April and Kareem Potts. He texts Jerry in service. He said, we got a lot of work to do to get this church. But Kareem don't know that from the time that the business was prayed for, they have never not been granted the contracts that they have put in for with their own private roofing company. And every time, Kareem said, I'm starting to believe this now. Every time he comes to church, a new big contract is released for their business. Matter of fact, y'all got to pick up a check tomorrow, don't y'all? See, Jerry Randall don't tell Tanya Randall all the checks, but thank God for a beautiful hairstylist that we sit and talk. I said, what? Another check? <laughs> got to keep this. I, I know, I know. We don't do that. Not at all. Got a shot. <laughs> but I'm thankful. My cousin Net. My cousin. She's about to start back up the church store. I don't know if it's Sunday or next Sunday, but there will be a hole cut in that wall over there, and we will have our little church store started back up. I said, like I told Deb, where you find your hands fit, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm waiting for International Day so we can get some curry chicken and some oxtails and some pigeon peas and rice, man. I said, we about to, yeah, Paula, Paula yes, Paula and Vivian and all my, 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 my Trinidad, Jamaican, my sisters, I want it all. Listen, I'm talking about promoting it because guess what? My husband and, and his cousins drove all the way to Stanford yesterday to go and get some Jamaican food. They didn't tell me and then invite me. But guess what? We're going to have an international day right here. And we're going to have it displayed so y'all can come through here and taste the cooking of all right, what we got right here. Don't y'all hate just come and buy a plate. That's what the t-shirt going to say on their apron. Don't hate, buy a plate. Look at that. No. 
Y'all, we going. We going because I'm too tickled. Marquise, I love you. I, you know I am. That's where I'm coming right now. Kendall Gerard Ward. I call the whole name. I love you so much because you kept the word and you came here today. Come here real quick. Why? Y'all got your mics, Brian and, and Cheeks? Y'all got your mics. All right, y'all come stand right here because I know. Let me tell you something. I love you so much. Let me tell you something. This young man is up in Bristol, Connecticut. And when he left home, he said it. He said, y'all going to miss me when I'm gone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you got to say it. You said it. We ain't think he meant it, though. Yeah, I said it to you, yeah. But he meant it. He ain't came back home. Matter of fact, he ain't even come to visit. But I am so thankful because he said, leaving here, he said, when I come back, I want to come back with the return of what y'all deposited in me. So I said, I don't care how long you stay away. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I want you to know is that you have made us so proud. Thank you. And we're thankful. <laughs> we love you. Love, love everybody. I'm <laughs> That's artist Kendall. <laughs> Did you come up and do your announcement? Come on. I, you, see, that's what I'm saying. Y'all, I promise. Can I tell y'all something? I'm going to put a little disclosure out there. I'm not going to be keeping y'all long like this. I'm still excited. Can, can y'all give me that? I'm still excited, y'all. That's all. That's all. Look, I'm, I'm excited. A few more things. No. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Um, whew. Listen, millionaire, thank you so much for that word. That kingdom language. Do you know how powerful that message is and what it really entails? My announcement has to deal with prayer. 6 a.m. to 6.30, we have an online prayer. 12 to 1, we have an afternoon prayer. And from 8 to 9, we have our intercessory prayer at night. All because of this man right here. Apostle, thank you. Thank you so much for the prayer. Because the word of God says, despise not small beginnings. There's times this man prayed by himself. Never stop praying. And I have to say that I'm so grateful because I'm a part of that prayer life. All because of you. So I'm sending out a charge right now because those who desire to have an intimate relationship with God, just raise your hand. Raise your hand and be sincere. Now the charge is to get connected with one of those prayer lines. Whether it's from 6 to 6.30, whether it's from 12 noon to 1, or it's from 8 to 9. But what I have to say, that because of the prayer of the righteous, that the change and the shift has been taking place. And I thank God for this man because it changed my life. And Minister Stacy said to me one time, just come out for one day. And not to say that I didn't have a prayer life, but it's different when you come together with your brothers and sisters because one can chase a thousand of flight. Two can chase 10,000. And then when you begin to understand that prayer is the backbone of the ministry. Prayer is the support system of the kingdom. And when you begin to set the kingdom language, and when we was going up in prayer, what I heard was the Tower of Babel. And what I mean by that is the fact that when they all was united in one language, in one speech, that God saw something that was in them, you're saying, that says, you know what? I need to come down and disturb that because they're going to accomplish. It wasn't Greek because God didn't speak Greek. God didn't speak Hebrew. God didn't speak, you know what I'm saying, English. The language that they had was faith. Yes. 
And what we understand when we come together as one in prayer, in unity, that there's nothing that we can't not do. Nothing, nothing Keisha, that we cannot do. Because this very same thing that you heard, I told Brian right over there the same thing. I said, this is a house of healing. This is a, you know, say a medical place. So I sent a charge. Those who want an intimate change and the shifting that is going to take place right now, that is happening already, I encourage you that it not only that will change your life, but it will change you're saying the support system. It's a communication with God. One more thing. With prayer, what's important is the word. Because if you're praying and you don't know the word, you, the book of James says you can pray amiss. And here, we're not in the season that we're going to miss. We don't need to miss what God is saying. And those who are desiring for God to fulfill the desires, what we need to understand, he says, delight thyself in the Lord. And then when his desires become your desires, then he actually will give it to you. Amen? Amen. So I encourage you, those who, who need that number, see Minister Tasha. She has that information. And those who, who can come here from 12 to 1 and from 8 to 9 so we can shake, you know what I'm saying, the kingdom of the enemy. Amen? Amen. All right. Come on, y'all. Crank that music up. Vani, can y'all give Vani a hand? She held down up there today by herself. We had a lot of call outs today, but she held it down. Give it up for Bryce on the floor. Bryce held it down on the floor. We need audio visual text, so y'all just, yes, y'all do what you do. <clears throat> See, I, I saw the cues. They said 06511. Did they say the whole thing or just 11? I'm not, okay, was it? None of that. All right. I hope y'all excited about the plan. I know God got a plan for me, for me. He got a plan for all of us. God got a plan for me. I understand. Lift up these mortal hands. Poverty, steady smiling, gotta pay the light bill People trying to sleep on me, make it happen, I will Steady chasing straight dreams, though the city never sleeps Steady getting hungry, even though you know I steady eat I fell into a mist of a darkness, dream state Coming from the bottom to the top, I see faith Those who came before me, and those who came after me That try to prosper, still make fatalities Bow to a man for the riches, I never would Go back to a place full of vengeance, I never could The crack epidemic, from consumption of my own Old girl, lost in this mess, I was trapped in this cold world Stepping through the doors of my house, broken home Feel like I can stare through the walls of the broken stone So fed up with the way that I've been living But hey. I know I had to struggle, man, hey. born into Look, affliction He got a plan for me, for all my friends and all my family I hope y'all good mentally, physically, and financially Praying for the weak, you know we strong If you stand with me, no weapon form I know that I'm good, he got his hands on me I'm ten toes, I don't tiptoe I'm doing good, but could be doing better around trip though Everything's a lesson, every L I I took, I fixed those Don't care about a friend Cause nowadays it's hard to pick those Grind it to that number on my check Look like a zip code Been through hell and back One hell attack I'm in a that's all about survival, that's why I keep a Bible I had a couple homies like Jesus had his disciples But out of 12, it's gonna be a Judas that don't like you Smile on your face, but then act so spiteful And I get mad, cause they think they got the right to Boy, if I wasn't covered in favor, I'd probably fight you Facts, but I'ma say that for the devil and his demons Cause they plotting and they scheming on my soul But they can't keep it, wait, wait Shouldn't have had it in the first place But I was in a hurt state, no, literally my worst state Now I'm good, cause I know the kingdom is my birthplace A praise break of Make hell shake like an earthquake You better have that kingdom language in your word bank Cause it's about to be a revolution like Kurt Frank Come on stand to your feet y'all There's more to come There's so much more, so much more Yes. All right, listen, we love y'all. We love y'all with uplifted hands. You guys have Oh, yes, indeed. And y'all, I see already y'all got your palms. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for your, the palms on today that we remembered. Let me tell you something. 
just as we get ready, I know y'all got your hands raised. Minister Emily Blunt. Yes. You don't know how much you blessed me to be a part of that ordination service last week. To hear your voice when you opened up and read the charge of the scripture out of Peter. I thank God for you. You have been another mother in our life, and I thank God. I said to hear your voice was like hearing mommy's voice, and I love you so much. All right, your children, I call them my brothers and sisters because we came up and grew up together, but I thank you for being here today. I thank you for the service that you have put forth for my life and being my mother's best friend. I love you. With uplifted hands, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything that's been accomplished today in this house. We thank you for every word that has been spoken. Father, go with us to our destinations that everything might be secure, safe and sound and kept in perfect peace. We bless your name and we thank you until you keep us this week, throughout this week, until we come to uh, together again. Bless us, keep us, refresh us and ignite us, Father, that our language might be right. We give you name, your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. You are dismissed. Listen, I'm still so excited, and I hope you are too right now. You have just again walked and ushered yourself into a place where, listen, the kingdom of God is making itself available to you. Why? Because your language is changing. And it is my petition that I'm putting out there to you. Change your posture and your position. Why? Because God said, I've adopted you to be greater, to do something greater. And as a matter of fact, we're getting ready to change the culture of the very things that have been an oppression to you. Your culture is changing because now you are part of kingdom culture. Listen, kingdom culture is all about your language changing. It's all about you knowing who you are and what you got to do. And this is the time, the place, and the opportunity to be able to recognize today that you are greater than your circumstance. My scripture that God gave me out of Romans 8 and 18, and you heard it today in the message, for I reckon, I consider you that the sufferings of what you might be going through right now, it is definitely not worthy to be compared with the glory that's about to be revealed in you. So get excited. Get excited. Tell somebody else about it. As a matter of fact, I dare you to share this. Like it. Subscribe to the channel because there's so much more that we get ready to talk about. Next week, you definitely don't want to miss it. Kingdom Language Series. Next week, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. I'll see you next week. said, y'all want to go and walk through there right now. He said, we done did the zoning for half of the stuff already. Because you had the idea to put things wow. around and put a ministry in the middle. So wow. Do it. Okay. All right. Let me get myself together. So he told me, he said, the building that Keisha was talking about today, she said, I need to talk to them. And I said, what? He said, the, the Ellie Fitness? He said, yeah. I just went like, yo, that be crazy. <laughs> No, no, no. I was like so jittery after that. Then I said, all right. I'm going to talk to you. 
let's go in the house and talk to Faye. Let's talk to her. Then I said, Faye talk. Then she said, you want to call Tanya? So we called Tanya. She couldn't, and I said, I'm going to call Jerry. Because we know Tanya don't have some phone. all up at the same time, and I'm... Boom. So now we here. Praise God. We're here. And I'm so jittery right now. I don't know what to do myself. But this is God, y'all. God. That welcome desk right there and glass doors coming right around there so you can enter in through any of those slots here, those doors to come into the main sanctuary. Yep, this is the more seat here. Right here, and this is overflow up here. Yep. Put TVs over here so they can see. Yep, the TVs here.